Hello and welcome to the Western Bulldogs podcast, Barclay Street, a new and improved, very slick Barclay Street today because Easton, I'll get to you in a moment, my co-host, my gorgeous co-host, Easton Wood, but we have a sponsor, my friend. Look out, yes. We, we have a sponsor. It's the Victorian 10. Responsible <laughs> Gambling Foundation. The Bulldogs have joined over 500 local sporting clubs who are encouraging kids to love the game, not the odds. You can find out tips on talking to your kids about the risks of sports betting at lovethegame.vic.gov.au. And Easton, you gorgeous bastard, you're an <laughs> ambassador for the VRGF, are you not? Yeah, I've been involved with them for a, a number of years now. Um, uh, a few years ago, um, I was getting a bit fed up with just the assault of gambling advertising that was uh, a commonplace in in our game, in watching footy, um, but across all across all sports, and in and the real crux of that, what I was really um, concerned about and frustrated with was, you know, sport becoming synonymous with gambling for for young kids, and them just yeah. uh, starting to believe that you know that that's that they went hand in hand together. When um, I think that's a real a real problem for society. So um, yeah, I've come on with the with the club for a number of years, and I've been a part of their, their love the game, not the odds campaign, which is doing great things. And um, yeah, really trying to separate the two and and make sure kids understand that um, yeah they're two very separate entities and. Um, yeah, you just don't have to have to go along with it. So, um, absolutely fantastic news to have them a part of the a part of the show. They've obviously been listening and loved our work, and uh, it's great to have them. They've loved it enough. I mean, it's <laughs> taken them till round nineteen. Um, so due diligence, they Bob. They've done they... their due diligence, and you know we've passed the test. <laughs> they did all their background checks. <laughs> Everything's been ticked off. Yep. We're as clean as a whistle. So thank you to uh, the Victorian Responsible Gambling Foundation. Now, how are you, mate? How's uh, how's lockdown like? Let's not spend too much time because people, are, everyone's kind of in it. You know, yep. we're all sort of in the drudgery of you know whether it's homeschooling or just being locked in our houses. But h- how are you, mate? How are you holding up? The fam's okay. Yeah, we're we're okay, mate. Um, we're just trying to do our best to entertain two kids under two. Uh, with something different each day um, makes it hard when it's wet outside. Um, but look, we're all in it, to, all in it together, which is nice to have that have that family time. But yeah, it can be trying at times, as as yeah. you know. But um, yeah, right. Well, um, I mean, just what's worked with my kids is YouTube and just a quick um, Bob Murphy highlight. It goes for about seven minutes. It's like not as not as long as a bluey episode, but just as entertaining. And also, there's a there's a good message in there as well. So just, you know, food for thought, mate. I'm just. just I'm actually sitting off. here and thinking, like, I know you're being facetious, but I really hope you actually have sat your kids down and been like, righto, kids, here we go. This time of the day, it's an everyday occurrence. Here's a couple of le- uh, right foot kicks out of the back line, and a couple on the left too. <laughs> Just sit back and enjoy. Sadly, sadly, my Not a lot kids, of tackles in the highlight the, package, but the hot. But well, well, <laughs> tackle. Hey, Is that a highlight? You know. Boring part of the game. Sadly, <laughs> I think I honestly think my kids have forgotten that I even uh, ever played. So um, uh, anyway, maybe maybe go with the bluey episodes instead. <laughs> uh, mate, how's your recovery? I heard a little whisper that you were a. Uh, you're a chance this week. What's the uh, I'm what's fit. The I'm fit, Bobo. I'm fit and ready to go. So very happy. Um, had it turned a real corner last week with the ankle. Um, I got a cortisone yep. injection into the ankle to help with my inflammation. I was it kept getting really puffy and um, my range yeah. was no good. So I got that and that's were you, were fixed you not, it. Were you not icing it and resting it like you were supposed to? Not doing the ricer. Rest, ice, compression, not, elevation, uh, and rest. Were you not, were you not following the, rest uh, the advice of the club medicos? What was hey? happening? <laughs> why was it, why did it keep swelling up? I was all why my fault. Un- so why? Because I landed on it and snapped it, mate. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Maybe that had something to do with the swelling. <laughs> no, oh, look, it, it um, that helped me turn the corner, and I'll be back back playing this week. And they've uh, managed to organise a um, uh, not a, like the VFL can't go ahead, but they've managed to organise a scratch match. Um, and as we know, very strange times in COVID, and we've got a mix of. Uh, our players uh, versus a mix yep. of Melbourne players sprinkled in with Port players, I believe, in between both squads. So, quite strange. Can you give me a quick? 
Can you give me a quick uh, venue and what jumpers are you wearing and <laughs> anything else? Of, uh, uh, I believe interest? it's at Witten Oval. Um, I hadn't yep. thought of the jumper scenario yet, so that's weird. Um, okay. I think we've got more numbers and being at Witten Oval, you'd think the red, white and blue has to feature. <laughs> um, I couldn't imagine running around in a port or a Melbourne. That's going to be strange. No. So, oh, yeah, yeah, very, yeah, very odd. Be- very odd, you but very happy to be report. playing a game to, um, yeah, get some match fitness, get some form, and and hopefully crack back into the the top side, mate. That's awesome, mate. Um, we're uh, we're happy to hear that news. We'll get a full report next week of how you went playing. Uh, hopefully, in a, in a Bulldogs uh, jumper. Uh, just quickly, um, Laverne and Shirley, how are they tracking? Because the the the, the actual Laverne and Shirley, of course. Yeah. From the city of Milwaukee, they're celebrating the NBA oh, championship. Hey, Bucks so, fans, look out! Yeah, <laughs> I assume they were Bucks fans. It's been a tough fifty years for wow. Laverne and Shirley. It's all, it's all coming up, Millhouse for Laverne and Shirley. It's all good. It is. It is all I'm coming back. up. It's all... Hey, can you um, just uh, the Josh Dunkley quarantine situation. I yes. had it explained to me, and I couldn't quite make sense of it. Are you able to sort of? <laughs> Navigate your way through that and uh, and tell our loyal listeners. Uh, I don't know if I'll help <laughs> make it any clearer, but yeah, he's he's uh, been to a tier one site, I believe, and he's he's happened to be in the the fourteen days quarantine, so he's at home. Um, fortunately for Dunks, that I don't think anyone that it could have happened to would have had a better training setup at their house. I mean, he's got. He's got a gym that he set up through COVID. He's got a treadmill there. Um, he's got a recovery pool and he's got, I think, yeah, he'll probably have everything he needs apart from, I suppose, space to run and and do footy drills. Yeah. So, um, yeah, really, really tough for, tough for Dunks to, after what yeah, was such a great back. period of him coming back so soon after a shoulder injury. Um, shouldn't be understated, you know, how tough, uh, you know, that feat was for him to come back in such a short period of time with a significant yeah. injury. Um, and he had to go bang straight into into quarantine. Just absolutely brutal. Yeah. Uh, and can you give us an update on the terrible news that came oh. through last week about about yeah. Toby and, and the ACL? That I was... I was on radio when the news came through and it kind of just knocked the absolute wind out of me. It was shocking news to hear. Yeah, just terrible, terrible, terrible news. Um, yeah, Toby went to change direction at training on Saturday and, um, yeah, he, he tore his ACL. Um, and it was one of those really, obviously, Toby's done a, a mountain of work having done his ACL last year and... Um, as, as you know, Bob, when you see a, a teammate go down and he was obviously quite distressed and he was emotional, obviously knowing instantly what that injury yeah. meant and what was ahead and yeah. what he had lost and the collection of everybody around him is also acutely aware of that. Um, and we've talked we talk about football mortality, I think, a, a couple of times yeah. before and, you know, it's just watching someone go through that once is awful, but... To do it again um, in such a short period of time after coming back healthy, um, it's just really, really, really hard. So our, our heart goes yeah. out to, to Tobes. Um, his recovery is going to be long. It's going to be hard. Um, and, and yeah, we just yeah bleed for him. Yeah. Well, um, he's got a whole heap of good wishes, I'm sure, yeah. from you, me, every, everyone else in the red, white and blue and beyond, really. Anyone um, follows their footy um love the way he plays and yeah. we know how good he can be hey easton on that uh, sad note about toby um we're going to lighten things up after the break so we'll just take a quick little spell and when we come in we're going to welcome one of our favorites on barclay street recently 150 gamer the great Lockie hunter to barclay street Welcome back to the Western Bulldogs podcast, Barclay Street, brought to you by the beautiful people from Victorian Responsible Gambling Foundation. They are beautiful. They're not as gorgeous as their ambassador, Eastern Wood, <laughs> and they are not even nearly as talented or as skilled as our guest on this week's episode, Lockie Hunter. Lock, welcome to the podcast, man. How are you? Thanks, Bob. Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, going very well, mate. Going well, and uh, life's good. What about yourself? 
Uh, yeah, going okay, mate. Uh, keeping our head above water, paddling away. Yeah, Homeschooling's uh, going on outside <laughs> my uh, door at the moment, so I'm happy to let this podcast roll for about <laughs> four hours if we just... Uh, if we all just want to get a meal and uh, and settle in, um, like how was uh, how was last week? Bit of uh, bit of COVID chaos that seems to be the the norm these days. But quick trip up to the Gold Coast and and jagged a win. How was how was it from your sort of perspective? Yeah, I mean it's always funny. I mean people are talking at the moment about how it changes hour by hour, um, and it really does. That <laughs> the day before we flew up, um, we got told we were probably flying after training. Um, by the time some of the boys had gone to bed, I think we were flying out. Um, pretty much early early on in the morning so um yeah it was a pretty long day that first day up there but um look up there to get the four points and it probably wasn't the, the greatest one you'll ever see but after a pretty tough week um we'll take it do you reckon the um that like so the chaos of the last 18 months with you know all the um changing of plans and all of the stuff you've all been through so i suppose it's a question to both of you has the is the last um week been sort of the most chaotic of the whole 18 months or has there been periods where it's been more uncertain do you reckon uh, I, th- I think it, at the moment it's it's a, a bit more chaotic just in term uh, we've probably got recency bias just because we're in it now as well but yeah with with last year it was bad but it was we knew it wasn't getting better for a long time so you kind of were able to prepare for a long period of time and we're in the yeah. we're all in the hub and we knew that was going to be uh, well, it was for 28 days and then <laughs> only 28 days and then we were there for, you know, three or four months. So um, that was quite long. But this is changing, um, you know, as, as Hunt said, they put a message out last week and half an hour later um, that had totally changed. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's a, uh, probably even more chaotic. What do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, one one thing you are you're just ready for anything now. Like we're, uh, to the point in which, like, I wouldn't it wouldn't shock me yesterday if the, we got told we were playing on Friday night now instead of Saturday. Like things, <laughs> nothing nothing yeah. will surprise you now. So that's one that's yeah. one thing I've taken out of this year. Yeah, okay. Um, so good went up on the Gold Coast. They've been going okay the last month. They've put together a, you know a, a sort of reasonable sort of block of form. So we didn't have to get over the line. How did you how did you find the Gold Coast and and Jamara had a bit of a breakout game after you know after his uh, you know pretty quiet debut the week before. What'd you make of uh, his start? Yeah, so Gold Coast um, they play you know a really honest brand of footy. They you know their mids tackle hard, they chase, they do all the right things um, pretty well. So they're they're often hard to gap um, in a sense that way. So um, yeah, ground out a pretty ugly win, but got there. Um, yeah, Jamara it obviously helps having Naughty back in the team with Naughty Brucey. Yeah, Jamara is probably able to get. You know, get the not so dominant um, tall defender, um, and he was able to showcase a lot of his skills. His, his stuff on the lead up, he's really quick off the mark, some really good agility, mm. um, and some really classy finishing, which which we've seen at training. So really happy for him. Absolutely. Yep. Now moving on to, yep. to you, mate. You played the 150th a couple of weeks ago. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, what did that mean to you? Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, you don't really think about it as you as you're coming along. Um, and, the, and the games are ticking away. There's obviously bigger things to focus on. Um, but it's always nice to kind of sit back with family and friends mm. probably after it. After the game, I was able to go out for dinner and um, catch up with a few friends and family. And, and it's nice to look back and, and share stories on the journey so far. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. How's the broken hand lock? You, you played, uh, you sort yeah. of you know, recovered incredibly about pretty quick. <laughs> quickly from it. How, uh, how's it feeling now? And, uh, is it sort of, does it improve week by week or you sort of just manage the pain? It's all. It's pretty much all good now. It, it still looks like it looks like I'm kind of hiding a bit of a USB or something inside <laughs> it. So it's not the most uh, visually not that impressive. The but, hand um, modelling is going yeah, out the window. Yeah. That's uh, no longer yeah, off after football. I've actually we're, our wedding's booked in for January. Um, so Maddie's a little bit flat that you know. As the, if there's any photos of the ring going on, it's not going to be great. But yeah. Oh well. Hey, hey, the the Bulldogs. Um, just a quick one before we get into some some more serious stuff. The the Bulldogs uh, social media team. They they put up something on Instagram yesterday. Favorite Bulldogs players ever. My feed got clogged immediately with tags. But I was keen to ask you. Oh, two. really? Is there a question on the back of this, or is it just an opportunity to bring up how popular you are? On the on the socials? No, no, no. Oh, no, it's not. That's oh. not how I meant it. Oh, this has backfired. No, I just, <laughs> you've got to explain context yes, of yeah. the question for the listeners. I was just segue. curious, as, as for you guys, who who are your you know who Shameless. who are your all time favourite bulldogs? I mean, Shameless. like, you, 
I mean, you're, you're old man, obviously, you know, played for the football club and, you know, distinguished footy career. But, yep. but if you had to go, you know, a past player, and don't pick me because I've, <laughs> I've, had, I've had enough mentions on the socials, but who, who do you reckon would be one that you might go for? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't actually remember my dad playing at all. I was too young. Um, but the, probably the era that I remember, I really loved watching Brad Johnson um, and I appreciated how much... Uh, he almost played as a centre half forward for the dogs, and he's nearly my height. Which the the older yeah. I get, seems more baffling to me. Um, mm. But yeah, I really appreciated his talent and love watching him play, and, and the passion that he played for the club with. He was probably one yeah. of my favourites. Yeah, um, and obviously um, having Rowan Smith as my coach, um, I, I didn't follow the dogs before I got drafted, but I do have vivid memories of him running across. Um, the 50 metre line and, and dubbing goals um, and love that so celebrating hard very hard celebrating hard <laughs> Peter, Peter Street Bubba. was pretty nice to watch as well oh, just for was. a variety of reasons yeah, he, was good. Um, he, would have, he would have been on a lot of yeah. memes back in the day <laughs> <laughs> very nice tap Ruckman Big Pete hey Lockie there's been um, there's been hot uh, contenders for mark of the year this year and I think most of the sort of football world as they like to call it would have it down to three of uh, Jack Revolt's mark, uh, Shy Bolton's mark, and who's the other one that I'm completely forgetting? There's, who's I don't the know. Third one? They're probably the two that stand out in my yeah. mark. I can't even think yeah, of the third. I forget. Yeah. Bye-bye. Oh, Oh, I mean, you brought this up, so maybe yeah. you probably should have been prob- locked and loaded. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's I'd going probably- it's going well. Well, I probably should have had the three written down. <laughs> no, he's a nice one. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's probably no. Nah. Yeah, naughty. he took. Yeah, no, yeah, and that was the one I was thinking. Anyway, the point I was trying <laughs> to make with you. was that I I would have put yours against St Kilda, the one where you ran back with the flight, um, with sort of incredible amount of bravery into it. I would have put that in the top echelon. That's the point I was trying to make. Okay, thank um, you. Can you can you walk us through it? Was it did. You, did you ha- just have your eyes on it and you were just set to go after it? Or do you? was there any moment where you sort of lost, uh, sort of, you know, disorientated or anything? No, I, I thought the kick was for me, to be honest. Um, looking yeah. back on the vision, it, it probably was for JJ. Um, but, yeah, I guess when you're sliding forward off that off that lateral wing, they're often, often you don't even get to those contests. And if you do, you pretty much have to go without hesitation or else you're not going not gonna to get there. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it was nice to nice to get that one and go go back with the flight and take it. And, and thankfully, JJ was ahead of his man, so he could look after me pretty well as well. And you're going so fast at that point, and like you can't. Yeah, you've got the speed wobbles nearly. You can't. Yeah, you're struggling and to because the ball. you've got your head up looking at the ball. I mean, you just have to go with everything you've got, don't you? It was yeah. an amazing, Mark, to, to get there. Not not often right in my wheelhouse either. Running back of the flight, <laughs> me and uh, me and Matthew Suckling used to joke. <laughs> Suckers used to just mis- misjudge a few in the air and just oh. go drop a ball after it. So I think he, he, we appreciate it. We had a good text message combo after that game. Uh, well, it was um, it certainly got uh, Bulldog supporters out of their chair, mate. So hats off to you for that one. Hey, East, I think we should give him the the classic three. Yep. I think Lockie would appreciate our classic three. Yep. Uh, yeah. But there, there is. A, we'll you, do you want to go the first one? Because there, there is a bit of pressure on one of our questions. Bit of pressure. Hang on. Is, is mine, mine, one the first one. Well, you can ask whichever one you want. But right, well, I'll go with my favourite, mate. The old. Okay. Um, Big fan of the podcast, old Archie Selleck, who's been the stalwart of the football club. As you know, he was, he was kicking around. When, was he here when your, your dad was here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's still, he's still, every training session he says, give your dad my regards. Every single training session. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the consistency of Archie is, is a sight to behold. Um, and, yeah, the question is, does Archie have a nickname for you? And if so, what is it? He does. It's um, It's delicious. And okay. I don't. Delicious. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's as creep it's as creepy as it is interesting to be honest. But, um, I think it stemmed from I think this is when Bruce was kind of commentating Cyril and Cyril was doing something nice and he kicked a goal and Bruce Bruce said it was delicious on the commentary. Yeah. And then I don't really know how that transferred over to me. But then I did see Archie out for dinner one night and he told me that his meal was delicious. So then from there, <laughs> I mean I don't know. That's yeah. So it wasn't from you kicking a goal because you were playing have, four. It you were playing training back or then. something, and he just at the time he said that was delicious. And then I don't know. I saw him out for dinner, and he kind of ran with it that night, and he said it three or four times. And then <laughs> ever does. since then, yeah, delicious. <laughs> Quite extraordinary. Fantastic. Um, what a man. Like, what what was the movie that uh, terrified you as a kid? Can you remember? <sighs> the movie that terrified me as a kid. Do you remember Deep Blue Sea? 
Uh, was, is that a shark yeah, one? Yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> for, for what I'm, um, if you haven't seen it, yeah, Deep Blue Sea. It is a shark one. Um, it's it, look. I've actually we actually saw a little snippet of it. My family not that long ago, and the, it's so bad. The graphics on it are terrible. <laughs> but I think I was about nine or ten, and uh, and that was probably the movie. What is it? Just big shark? Yeah, big shark. And they're on some kind of, you know some kind of thing out in the ocean and it falls down slowly and I don't know just a pretty classic storyline really most of them die yeah. alright well and the third one which is a question we've asked all of our guests so far on this year but it's, it's getting a bit of pushback on uh, Twitter we've got a bit of abuse um, plowing through Bubbo what's that plowing through yeah well it's it's up to the players now. So the question <laughs> but is... But they change every week, so you're going to be asking them every week. <laughs> well, the question is, <laughs> from the uh, Chicago Bulls documentary, The Last Dance, <laughs> Yep. Of, of those characters, and you can't pick Michael Jordan, of, of the characters um, in the documentary, which one kind of interested you the most and why? Um... Oh, Dennis, Ro- <laughs> Dennis Rodman, for so many reasons, was <laughs> just so many parts of his life. Even, I did, yeah, I've had a look at kind of what he did outside of basketball since, and there's just, you'd love to spend a day in his head. There was a lot of oh, stuff happening yeah. there. Yeah. Ask, what did he ask for during the finals? He asked for a couple of days off because he wanted to go to Vegas. And didn't come back for a week, was it? No. He, they, I think they gave him 48 hours, but he took kind of <laughs> four or five days. He had to go and, gr- and yeah, he just, then, then he room. went... It didn't like Grant so in the finals finals like he went he popped up He's wrestling dub- yeah he, he he contested I think a WWE belt and took a day off training he didn't <laughs> didn't come in and yeah contested in a cage match or something <laughs> <laughs> and he's he, he done contest- films with John Claude Van yeah. Damme and yeah. he's and friends just how with that, kind of how that mentality fits into Kim the Jong-un? whole Michael Jordan he's yeah, now mates with Kim Jong-un. Jong-un how does that happen yeah where he fits into and how they were Married able to himself. fit him into to kind of everyone else who seems so professional <laughs> and so wild um, yeah. It's wild. yeah, it was wild. Um, I still can't remember that third mark. I still am racking I really my brain. Don't know. I can't I even. Rewind Bolton. going back to the floor. Bolton. Bolton. It was someone else. Why can't I remember that? <laughs> Are, you sure? Are you sure there's three? Are you sure there was three? There's three. I'm telling you. Do you I'm just... telling you there's a third one. I can try and look it up for you. We need to sort this out. It's going to absolutely. I've been trying to Google it while I'm talking to you. And I can't <laughs> Uh, I still can't find it. All I can see is pictures of Bolton. Anyway. I'm pretty sure hey, Rewat's Rewat, uh, going to be in the lead anyway, isn't he? It's an incredible yeah, one. Yeah. I think so. It was unbelievable. Um, so we've got the Demons this week, Locke, and um, in front of no fans again. So it's similar to last time. And, and last time they they touched us up and, and uh, yeah, sort of pulled us apart a little bit. Um, how's the preparation been for the Demons and can we look forward to a different result this time? Yeah, look, hopefully. I mean, they, they, they were really good last time. Our skill wasn't great last time either. Um, I can remember, you know, every time we kind of took width and those plays that normally, um, you know, work out in something for us and seem so adventurous, um, they were able to shut down really quickly for a, a variety of reasons. So, um, yeah, we've gone to work on it since then. Um, hopefully we can be a bit better around the ball as well. I don't think the clearance numbers were too good. It's obviously always pretty hard with, with Max Gorn in the game. Um, but now we'll do our best and, and hopefully looking forward to a different result. Tim O'Brien. Oh, it was Tim O'Brien. <laughs> I can't even match. picture the mark. <laughs> it was oh. an absolute screamer. I, I do remember oh, it. Was. Man. Yeah. I don't think I've ever yeah. seen it. Well done, Bob. You Jeez. seem pretty happy anyway. <laughs> Oh, that's just made my day. So where would you would you have him? Is he still ranked number three and you've put that much thought into it? Nah, I, I honestly, I'm not sure. Like, I, Bolton's third. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I think it's out of Revolt and O'Brien. The more I look at O'Brien's, it's it's incredibly okay. spectacular. But Jack's mark kind of had everything that's... Yeah, um, yeah, and degree of difficulty off the absolute charts. Had no right. Yes. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah, the courage and there was wild. Uh, anyway, so, but I had yours in fourth place. That was the Thanks, sort of mate. that was Thank the broad you. point I that I was trying to make. There yeah, we go. We got work. Work. Thank <laughs> you. And, I, and I think anyone listening to Barclay Street this week will appreciate the you know, the thought that, I've, um, that we all put into that. Thank you. Hey, mate. Good luck for this week. Um, well done on the 150 a couple of weeks ago, and it's a, a big milestone from a bloke who's got red, white, and blue running through mm. his veins. Um, it would be important for you, and you, you're certainly not slowing down. You might. 
you might be uh, you might only be halfway, mate, and you might even have a bit more than that in you. So um, well done. Good luck this week against the Demons. They're ripe for a touch up. Be nice to get over the top of them before the finals. Eason, good luck to you having a having a hit out this week. God knows what it. jumper you'll be wearing. Who knows? Um, good luck to Tim O'Brien this week. He'll be playing for Hawthorne, and maybe you could take <laughs> another mark. And glad we could finally, glad we could finally well, get his name checked. <laughs> in there and uh, and we'll catch you all next week but uh, thanks for checking in with uh, Barclay Street see you on the other side thank you thanks bye bye